understand something from from the moment from the moment we are born from the moment we are born we are we are truly recognized we are truly recognized and we recognize within ourselves our hunger for more life uh, you know we are we we try to grasp at every experience uh, we enjoy or try to enjoy every relationship and we also try to maximize every opportunity. Yet, yet, even if we uh, fill our lives to the brim, amen, with all this world has to offer, we are never fully satisfied in any way. Listen, if we were created by God himself to live fulfilling lives, and, you know, the question is, why do so many of us feel like we are, uh, are running out and running on empty, you know? Though we were created by God, amen, to live lives that are rich and satisfying, understand something, they can only be made complete by the relationship we have with God. That's it. You know, um, Christ is not only uh, the life, but he is also the truth and the way in which we can have a fulfilling relationship with God the way we were designed to. Amen. Now, God cannot, uh, he, he's not, he may not guarantee us consistent happiness every day and every hour and every moment, but he does promise to be a ever flowing source of joy. You know, listen, joy knows and reminds us that our security uh, is in our rest, our restored relationship with God. That's where our, our security is. It's, it's in our restored relationship with God in the eternal life in Jesus Christ. This is how we can live a life to the fullest. Amen. So as we encounter our text this morning, let us consider the thought, let us consider the thought, life or live life to the fullest. Live life to the fullest. You know, um, Jesus is the only door that leads to abundant life. He is the only door that leads to abundant life. And in this text that we are about to encounter, we see the sharp contrast between the thief and Christ the thief and Christ, the thief and Christ. Listen, look at the text. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. This is the, this is the agenda of the thief. Now, in order to have a more abundant life, hear me out now, in order to have a more abundant life, we must avoid the thief at all costs. Who is the thief? The thief is the enemy of God, is Satan himself, the devil. Because the thief or the enemy, the thief is which is the enemy of God, his only intention, his only intentions are evil, okay? His intention is to steal all that he can 
kill all that he can and destroy the lives of all he can. Amen. And how he does this is the thief, he, mis he misleads God's people. Well, he just misleads people in general and deceives them by trying to lead them through the door that leads totally to destruction. And, and it might look glamorous. It might look fulfilling, the door that he's trying to lead you through and the teachings he's trying to teach you. It might look fulfilling, but the enemy's agenda and his goal is to destroy, it is to kill, steal, and destroy. So walking you through this door will lead to total destruction. Number one, number one, all the enemy can do, and this is how, just check me out, I got just three things I want to uh, share with you. All the enemy can do is copy and steal. That's what he does. This is the way that he leads, this is the way that he steals, kills, and destroys. Number one, all he can do is copy and steal. If he can't copy to get attention, then he will steal to get attention. Let me tell you what he steals. He steals your joy. He steals your, your, your energy. He steals what you think is most valuable here on earth. And ho he hopes that you will stop listening to God and following God's word. That is his agenda. That's his number one agenda is to steal and stop you from listening to God. Stop you from having a relationship and a fellowship with God. Stop you from worshiping God and try to get you to worship him. That's number one. Number two is this. The enemy tries to kill you from the inside, the inside. Listen, he, he speaks lies to, to you to, to tear you down, you know, telling you you're no good, God can't use you because of the mistakes that you have made in the past or the, the, the sin that you may have fallen into. He always tries to tear you down and speak lies, lies into your life to try to stop you from living life to the fullest. He speaks fear into your life, amen, to stop you from doing what it is God has called you to do. He speaks that fear into your life. Some of us uh, want to be singers. Some of us want to be praise and worship leaders. A lot of us want to be preachers and teachers and, and youth leaders. But Satan has a way to speak that, speaking that fear into your life. Some of you should be deacons by now. Some of you should be a lot more. You should be leaders in the body of Christ. Uh, but Satan has a way of speaking fear into your life. Oh, I, I don't speak well enough. I'm not uh, as educated when it comes to the Bible or the word of God. Yeah, I don't think uh, it, that's for me. See, he speaks that fear into your life and that stops you from living life to the fullest. Some of you should have been great ball players. Some of y'all could have made the NBA. Some of you could have been great football players. Some of you were, were models. Some, some of you could have been female artists or whatever God had put on your heart or, you know, when you was coming up. Everybody had a dream, everybody had a goal. But Satan has a way to stop you and, 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 and uh, distract you from what it is God had intended for you. And, and, these, and this is the way he does it. He wears you down emotionally, mentally, so that you will not choose to live the good life that God wants for you 
but you will choose that other door that only has a, a, a ending of destruction. And number three is this. When the enemy tries to destroy, when the enemy tries to destroy, it is because he has already been defeated. He has already been defeated. And he wants to take down as many people with him as he can. That's what, he, that's what he wants to do because he knows he has already defeated. He knows that his days are numbered. Amen. But he wants to destroy you in the process. Listen, Satan does not like God, and he definitely don't like you either. And his agenda is to take from you to kill you, and to destroy your life. That is his goal. Amen. Satan works at destroying people's lives. And it's not, you know, we, 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 all, we are often thinking that Satan moves real fast and real quick. Satan is very, uh, uh, you know, he's very meticulous about the way he go about things. Sometimes it's a slow move, a slow grind until he wears you down. Because you're, you're, you're not living that life to the fullest in Jesus Christ. You're not coming to Bible study, Sunday school, doing it, it, what it is God has called you, learning the word, allowing it to meditate and minister to your spirit. Amen? We'll come every now and then. We'll We'll pray every now and then. We'll have a devotion when things get tough, but then when life is good, we kind of forget all about God. That's when Satan creeps in. That's when he creeps in. And he starts that slow grind to destroy your life. He tempts you to destroy even yourself with the vices that you come in contact with. He tries to destroy everything you have ever built in your life through your family, through your friends, through your job, through your schooling, through your education, whatever it is, Satan day after day tries to destroy everything that you have built up. His goal is destruction and to prevent you from living a, a abundant life in Jesus Christ. <laughs> His goal is he doesn't want you to live a life to the fullest. He does not want that. That, that, is, that is not where he wants you to go. He does not want you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He does not want you to have a relationship with God. He doesn't want you to, to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. He doesn't want any of that. He doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny, what God has intended for you. He does not want that. He wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy. The world is set up. to kill, steal, and destroy. It's set up like that. If you uh, allow it to lead you through, if you allow the enemy to lead you through that door. Amen? But, but, but listen to this. There is hope. Look at the text. And, I, and I'm not going to be long. Look at the text. It says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That's what the text says. That's not Pastor Gore saying. The text says, this is Christ saying, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Understand something. A Christian enters the good life 
that God intended for him only through the right gate that God shows him. And the basis of this good life is not what we have accomplished. Huh? The basis of this good life is not what we have accomplished, but what Jesus Christ has accomplished on the cross. Huh? Jesus gives us abundant life. He gives abundant life to all who follows him and uh, obedient, obedient to his word. Huh? You know, this, this speaks of uh, the gift of divine eternal life as which becomes the possession of every believer from now to eternity, you know. Jesus will provide to all those who follow him, he will provide eternal life. And it is at the cost of his own life. Amen? But the message was not be good now so you can go to heaven. That's not his message. His message was get right with God so you can enjoy the life that God wants you to enjoy now. That's his message. And as well, go to heaven. Huh? If we follow Jesus Christ, stay with me. If we follow Jesus Christ, and we are obedient to his word. This is what living a life to the fullest will be like. Look at this. Number one, number one, love, love. This is what the, the life, uh, living life to the fullest would look like. This is what it would look like. Number one, you would have love. Knowing that God loves us and his love will never let us go. That's number one. All right. And number two is this. Number two is joy. Not the passing happiness, which so many people find in the false gods and like money and, and entertainment and false relationship, but true joy, which no one and nothing can take away. That's the type of joy that we are speaking of. That's what you will receive when you are living the life to the fullest in Christ. Huh? Number three is this, is peace. Peace. The calm of knowing that everything is safe in the hands of the Almighty God. In the hands of the Almighty God. That, that type of peace, knowing that God, he got it, he got your back. That's the type of peace that you will have and you will enjoy and feel when you are living that life to the fullest in Jesus Christ. Number four is eternal life. Eternal life. Which not even death can take away from you. Eternal life. Number five is victory over the devil and all the powers of evil. That's another one. A life which isn't lived under the circumstances, but which triumphs over the circumstances. We don't live in, this, we, in the circumstances. We, we triumph over the circumstances when we are living life to the fullest in Jesus Christ. Amen. You're walking through the valley. You're not staying in the valley. You're going to have some valleys and you're going to have some mountaintops. But when you go through the valley, you're going with Jesus Christ and he's walking you through the valley. He's walking you through your circumstances. That's how you live life to the fullest. And last but not least is freedom. Freedom. The glorious liberty of the children of God 
If the Son shall set you free, you are free indeed. Amen. That is living life to the fullest. That is living life to the fullest. If we got, you have to remember that it is love, that it is joy, that it is peace, that it is understanding, that it is victory over the devil and all of his powers. And last but not least, freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from all things that are not of God. Freedom. Listen, that is how we live the life to the fullest. God, God, God didn't say be, because you become a Christian, life ends. He didn't say that. You just stop living the sinful life. There are a lot of things that you can do, a lot of things that you can get involved with, amen, that will bring you joy, that will bring you peace, amen, if you follow the word of God. You know, <laughs> you know, when we were in the life of sin, we thought we were having a ball, but we were heading straight to hell and didn't even know it. But now we're living a life of, uh, in Jesus Christ. We're living a life in the body of Christ. And it doesn't have to be a boring life. It doesn't have to be a life without joy and, and fun and and laughter, and kindness. It doesn't have to be a life. It could be a life full of a lot of adventures. It's just a life that is more obedient to the word of God and in line with the word. Amen? A lot are not living life to the fullest. Some go to church all their lives, all their lives, and never live life to the fullest. Amen? Anything that the world has to offer that is not in line with God and his word is something we should avoid. Talking to you young people. And I know it's a lot. You know, you, you, you got the social media now. Uh, you have uh, TikTok and Instagram and all those different <laughs> things that they are into. And you're bombarded by sinful acts all the time that it, it almost come, it almost uh, make you uh, normalize sin because you see it so much. You see the, 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 the gangster rap, the killing, the, 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 uh, the, the sex, the, uh, the drugs, the addictions, the alcohol, whatever it is they want to get into. You see it every day, day in and day out, on your computer, on your phone, on your, t on your TV. Amen? And it's hard to, to, to look at anything else because it's, it's, so, it's so saturated. That, you know, it basically, and I think me and AP was talking about this, or Madam and Bernard, sin has become mainstream, <laughs> basically, basically. Sin has become mainstream. It's out there now. You know, I remember when I was growing up and I was talking to someone about this. When I was growing up, you didn't see it a lot. You didn't see cussing on TV and inappropriate things on television or whatever the situation may be. Everything wasn't perfect. I'm not saying that. But we did have respect for, you know, some things. We had respect for our neighbors. When I was growing up, we, we definitely had respect for the older people, you know, and the little small children. But those things have changed. You know, they're snatching kids. They're snatching young girls. Yeah, we have people in our own neighborhood that, that are in the human trafficking and, 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 and uh, uh, selling drugs and, and gang banging and, 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 and robbing and killing for no apparent reason, you know, just because they want to. You know, so we see a lot of that now. And we are... Uh, uh, are bombarded by the sinful acts, the way uh, our females 
are dressing and, and carrying themselves and the way our young men are treating them and speaking to them and the names that they are calling them uh, and how they are disrespecting women and womanhood. We see a lot of that. And we're bombarded by it. rappers who speak ill of women and and then the girls in the videos dancing, you know, as if it's okay. You know, so we see that. You know. So that's why it's important that we avoid the enemy and his teachings at all costs. Teach our children about love, teach them about joy, peace, eternal life. Teach them that they have the victory over the powers of the devil and God has given them freedom. That's what we need to teach our young people. Amen. So as we come to the end of our journey in the word of God, remember this. Remember this. In contrast to the thief who takes life, Jesus gives life. The life he gives right now is abundantly richer and fuller. It lasts forever. Yet, it begins today. 